Hello, 3D printing friends. Today on the BV 3D channel, we're gonna do something a little different and we're gonna get a look at a really cool fully enclosed 40 watt diode laser with a unique feature that raises it above the competition. But I promise you there is something 3D printed in this video and we'll start right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV 3D. Hi, welcome back. Okay, so today we're taking a look at this. It's the We Create Vision, a 40 watt fully enclosed diode laser with a cool autofocus feature that raises it above other lasers. This particular bundle also came with a rotary accessory, so we'll take that for a spin too. Thanks to We Create for sending this to the channel so I could show it to you. We'll go over specs and features, talk about hardware and software setup, and do a little bit of laser cutting and engraving. This video is on the longish side, so please use the chapter markers on the video's timeline if you want to skip over certain parts or replay others. And please enjoy the lovingly handcrafted closed captions. Let's go over the specs and features real quick. It's got a footprint of 589 millimeters by 531 millimeters, or about 23 inches by 21 inches. At its shortest, it's about 253 millimeters tall, or just under 10 inches. And when it's at its full height, it's 393 millimeters, or about 15 and a half inches tall. It's got a 40 watt diode laser module, making a laser spot that's 0.18 by 0.21 millimeters in size. That laser module has a 10,000 hour lifespan, and its maximum engraving speed is 600 millimeters per second. The Z-axis range is 140 millimeters, or about five and a half inches, and that's the full range of motion on the auto lifting system. And that auto lifting system is how it auto focuses the laser. The Vision weighs just under 20 kilograms, or about 44 pounds. It's also got air assist, and it has an exhaust fan to vent the smoke generated during cutting and engraving. On the front, there's a big friendly start pause button. It's blue when the vision is idle, green when it's running a job, and red if there's an error. Underneath, there's a removable crumb tray that catches the little bits and pieces that happen when you laser cut things. And around the back, there's the power connector for the air assist pump, the air input that comes from that pump, the vision's power switch, its power input port, because it uses a 24 volt power brick instead of plugging directly into the wall. And there's also a USB port, a Wi-Fi antenna connector, and the big exhaust port. Inside, there's a light strip across the midsection of the lid with a camera mounted in the center. The camera shows you the inside of the unit so you can get your designs lined up on the things you're planning to cut or engrave. The unit we create sent was the 40 watt rotary pack, so it also includes the motorized rotary accessory unit, and I'll be using that in a project later in the video. Setting up the vision is pretty straightforward, and one of the best tips I can give you is to watch we Create's video called How to Unbox and Install Your we Create Vision to see how to best get the thing out of the box and get it ready to use. In addition to that one, I recommend one called Before First Use, Checking your We Create Vision for freight damage. I have both of those linked in the description for you. When I went through the freight damage one, I discovered I needed to perform an alignment on the X axis, which was surprising because the box it shipped in looked fine. But the alignment was super easy to do, and the video showed me exactly what to do. So that's my advice on getting the hardware set up, aside from what to do with the exhaust hose. And that leads me to a bit of a rant. I don't usually rant, so instead of calling this a rant about ventilation, I'll use the word note. So this is a note about ventilation. In other words, what to do about the smoke and fumes that result from laser cutting and engraving. To go along with the vision, we create cells a smoke purifier unit, which is basically a big air filtration box that's supposed to take care of the smoke and fumes and allow you to use the laser indoors and they include it in some of the vision bundles like the one they sent to me. My problem was that the smoke purifier arrived about a week or so after the vision arrived because it was out of stock. Without that smoke purifier, we create expects that you'll have the vision set up near a window so you can open it and hang the exhaust hose outside. And that sounds simple enough, but first off, 
you need to set the vision up near a window that you can open. And then after you open the window, you need to remove the window screen. And that's not always easy. Some screens come off from the inside. That's easy mode. But some screens come off from the outside. And that's a problem if you're not on the ground floor or if there's heavy duty shrubbery in the way. Plus, with an open window and no screen, you might have to worry about pets getting out, and it's practically guaranteed that you're going to end up with bugs getting in. Or, my worst nightmare, squirrels. Not that I hate squirrels. I think they're stinking cute. But squirrels running loose in my house? Thank you no. Anyway, all that ranting to say I hate removing screens because it's a pain. But there is a solution for those who don't opt for the smoke purifier and don't want to or can't remove their window screens. If you've ever used a portable room air conditioner, those vent hot air to the outside through a window, just like the Vision vents out smoke and fumes. But the air conditioners come with an adjustable thing that gets held in place by the window itself to provide a bit of a seal and a place to attach the end of the hose. So you don't have to remove a screen, which could let pets out or bugs and squirrels in. Unfortunately, the Vision doesn't come with something like that. But I have 3D printers and rudimentary 3D modeling skills, so I made one of my own. My first draft was a quick and dirty design with sliding panels to accommodate different window widths, but that didn't work quite as well as I hoped. My second draft used a piece of foam core board with a hole cut in it to accommodate a 3D printed hose adapter glued onto it. See, I told you there was something 3D printed in this video. So anyway, I used that until the smoke purifier showed up, and if you have a 3D printer and you want to go this route, I linked the file in the description. It's yours, free of charge. With that out of the way, it's time to get the software set up. I'm following along with the manual, which directs me to download and install the WeCreate Make It app. So I did that, and the first time I launched it, I was prompted to sign in or create an account. And the reason for signing in is so you can access the hundreds of pre-made designs they have available. There are a bunch of categories and featured designs and stuff, and we'll pick a couple of them to make in a little bit. So the We Create Make It app has three tabs along the top, Discover, My Stuff, and Canvas. The Discover tab is where all those designs live, and you can explore that looking for fun stuff to make. The My Stuff tab is where your projects end up. These are the things that you've bookmarked from the Discover tab, projects you've done, and stuff like that. And there's the Canvas tab, which is like your currently active project. Connecting the WeCreate Make It app to the Vision is done via USB, at least initially. WeCreate includes a USB cable to connect the laser to your computer, and if your computer only has USB Type-C ports, they include an adapter to go on the end of the cable so you can use it. I found the included USB cable to be a bit short though, so I bought a 10 foot long one from Amazon. That said, you can actually connect the Vision to your Wi-Fi network. The only catch is that you have to connect it to your computer with that USB cable, so you can use the Make It app to send your Wi-Fi network's name and password to the Vision. But you only have to do that one time. After that, the Vision is on the network and you can use it without a cable. Hey, so now that the hardware and software are set up, let's do a couple of quick projects. I want to test the accuracy of the camera, so I'm going to do something both silly and fun. I'm going to personalize a pencil by engraving on it. So I'll put a pencil on the laser bed grill looking things inside the Vision. I'm using a clip to keep the pencil from rolling back and forth when the laser is engraving. Then, in the Make It app, I'll click the Canvas tab. If Make It doesn't show you the view from inside the Vision, click the Refresh button to snap a new picture from the Vision's camera. So now, I can see where the pencil is and I can zoom in and adjust my view a bit. Thanks to the grid superimposed on the image, I can tell that the pencil is at a tiny bit of an angle, but that's okay. I'll click the Text tool and then click on the Canvas so I can add some text. Its standard text is hello, and it's large compared to the pencil, but I can drag it around to position it and resize it and change it. So this is set to do a line engrave, which will trace the outlines, but a fill engrave is more what I want, so I'll click that. This preview shows that Make It is set to engrave on cherry wood, and I think that's fine for the pencil. 
really all I'm going for is lasering through the paint. One of the things that sets the Make It app apart from the others is that it has a bunch of materials already listed in it with pictures of what they look like when engraved at certain power levels and speeds. This lets you simply click the square that has the look you want and it sets the power and speed accordingly. So with that done, I'm almost ready to start the job, but before I do, I need to click the auto focus button. The vision will move the tool head to where it's going to engrave the design and with that cool auto lifting feature, sets the correct focal distance to the pencil. Now that I've focused my vision, see what I did there? I'll click start and then I'll click send. That sends the job to the vision and it'll wait patiently until I press the friendly glowing button on the front. Okay, ready? Here goes. The laser moves into place to quickly engrave the pencil and it's all over in just a few seconds. Let's get a look at the result. Holy heck, that's perfect. It's exactly where I placed it on the screen. That's cool, I'm impressed with that. Okay, so having done some simple engraving on a pencil, let's do a project that requires some cutting. Scrolling through the Make It app, I found this cool geometric line pen holder design. That looks perfect, so I'll click the Make It button and it'll open on the canvas. The Make It app takes a picture with the Visions camera so I can see where the design will be located on the material that I've got loaded in the laser. I'll click the material pop-up menu so I can tell the Make It app about the three millimeter piece of basswood plywood that I've got loaded. For basswood, there's only a preset for six millimeters, but that's okay. If the laser's power is set to cut through six millimeters, it can cut through three millimeters. To make more efficient use of the basswood, I'm going to move these parts around on the sheet. I previously did a test engraving just to make sure everything was okay, and that's the hello text with the oval around it, but this design doesn't take up the full sheet, so I can just avoid that part of it. Now that I've got the project parts closer together, I think it's time to start cutting. Clicking the autofocus button does the focusing thing, and then I can click the start button. Make It estimates 24 minutes to do this cutting job. That's fine with me, so I'll click send to send it over to the vision. And last, pressing the button on the front of the vision starts cutting. And about 25 minutes later, the cutting is done. I'll get these parts out of the laser and glue them together. The end result is pretty cool, and now I have a place to put all the personalized pencils I produce. Hey, if you're enjoying the video, a subscribe would be awesome. That lets me know I'm making content you enjoy and you want to see more like it. Thanks. Now that I have the perfect place to park a personalized pencil, I think I want to make a cool coaster. I searched for coaster in Make It, and there were more than 20 designs. I like this Grill Master one because it's got a spot in the middle for a name, and being able to personalize or customize a design for gifts or to sell is often a core reason that people invest in lasers like this. So I'll pull that one onto the canvas and use the text tool to add my name. Then I can look through the fonts to find something I like. There are tons of fonts in here, but I think Polar One Regular is the one for me. I'll resize it and position it on the design. I've loaded a round slate blank, so clicking the refresh button will get a new image from inside the vision. And a neat trick I learned is that you can put a piece of white paper behind a dark object like these coasters to make them easier to see. Next, I need to get the design lined up on the blank. I'll set the material type to slate and pick an appropriate power and speed setting from the material chart. Then it's autofocus and start and send and turn on the smoke purifier and then press the button on the front of the vision. And a few minutes later, I've got a coaster. How cool is that? I want to do one more project and this will use the rotary accessory to engrave my logo on a tumbler. The barbecue grills have to come out so the rotary can go in. It's got an electrical connection to plug in and a couple of screws to hold it in place. And once it's installed, I can tighten the jaws to hold the tumbler in place for engraving. Then I'll create a new project and change from laser flat to laser cylindrical. 
For cylindrical engraving, the Make It app needs to know either the diameter or the circumference of the object mounted in the rotary accessory. This tumbler is 275 millimeters in circumference, so I'll put that value in. Then I'll import my logo file. I need to scale it down, rotate it 180 degrees, and position it on the tumbler. Then I'll use the material settings card to pick the power and speed settings, and then I'll send this to the vision and start the job. When it finished, it looked kind of ugly, but a quick trip to the kitchen sink with some dish soap and a Mr. Clean magic eraser got it looking pristine. I like it. Now that I've done some projects, I want to talk a bit about my experience using the smoke purifier. As it turns out, the smoke and smell arising from using the laser to cut a material seems to be an order of magnitude greater than when engraving. I didn't have an issue with it at all when I was engraving on the coaster. There wasn't really any smoke and the odor was minimal with the filter. When I did the tumbler, where the laser had to burn through the painted on coating, that had an unpleasant odor to it. And when I cut out that pencil holder, that produced quite a bit of smoke. The unit did a good job of dealing with the smoke. I can honestly say there was no smoke visible in the room while I was using it. But the smell of burning wood got pretty intense pretty quickly. I ended up pausing the job and switching to my homemade window vent so I could vent the smoke outside. You can see there's actually quite a bit of smoke being generated from the cutting process, both inside the vision and being pushed outside. So if your main use case for the vision is engraving and you can't situate the machine near a window to vent outdoors, I think the smoke purifier can at least keep the smoke at bay and take care of at least some of the odor but it's going to depend a lot on what you're engraving. Like I said, I didn't have a problem with it when I engraved the coasters, but the tumbler was another matter. And cutting that pencil holder was just, no. Quite honestly, I think it would be best to vent the vision outside no matter what you use it for. To me, the smoke purifier is kind of a last resort if you don't have any other way to vent to the outside. Not gonna lie, it took several hours for the smoky smell in the studio to die down. Now, here are the things I like and don't like about the Vision, starting with the things I don't like. I'm not completely sold on the barbecue grill slats the Vision uses to keep materials raised above the crumb tray. I was afraid I would have problems with cut parts falling through, but so far that hasn't happened. But with narrow parts, you do have to be mindful of the direction the slats go. Also, the slats are made of aluminum, so you won't be able to use magnets to hold materials in place. If that starts to bug me enough, I may buy a third-party steel honeycomb grill. That'll give me more support for thin parts and also let me use magnets to hold down paper or other thin materials when cutting. You can't easily engrave or cut clear acrylic. The laser light mostly passes right through the acrylic without doing anything except bubbling or melting it, but the laser doesn't mark or cut it cleanly. You can apply a coating, such as black tempera paint, to the acrylic before etching. The paint gives the laser something to hit and heat up, which then slightly melts the acrylic immediately below the paint. When the job is done and you wash the paint off, you'll have an etched surface. Unfortunately, this just isn't as clean of a result as you get with a CO2 laser, and it's simply a function of the wavelength of the laser light. You may have better results with dark colored acrylic, but in general, it seems that working with acrylic isn't something diode lasers, at least for now, excel at. The last thing is the smoke purifier's performance, as I covered in the segment just before this. It gets the smoke, but not the smell. So if at all possible, vent the vision outside. Okay, now it's time for the things I like. I mentioned some of the things the vision wasn't super great at, but here are some of the things you can easily do with the WeCreate Vision. You can cut and engrave wood. You can cut cardboard and paper. You can engrave on stone, like slate. Maybe not every kind of stone, but slate works really well. And you can cut and engrave leather. Overall, I find that the Vision is quieter than a CO2 laser, or at least it's quieter than the CO2 laser I have. The air assist pump is way quieter on the Vision compared to my CO2 laser's air pump. The rotary accessory is awesome. The three-jaw chuck does a great job of holding onto tumblers and other cylindrical objects. 
And the auto lift feature on the Vision for autofocusing isn't just a gimmick, it works really well. I'd say it even elevates the experience of using the laser. On my CO2 laser, I have to manually calculate the focal distance and then enter that into the software. Autofocus on the Vision is literally just one click and it's done. One more thing I like is the material test array images that we create provides for different materials. This gives you a handy visual way to select the appropriate power and speed settings for your project. And we create has a tutorial to show you how to do this on any material. I did one on a slate coaster and I also did one on an old MacBook Air so I can engrave designs without having to guess at the settings. So that's the we create vision 40 watt diode laser. At the time of recording, it looks like these are on sale, starting at about $1,800 for the basic Vision 40 watt and Air Assist pump. There are various bundles to choose from, and there's a link down in the description. Thanks again to WeCreate for sending the Vision over. Thank you for watching, and big thanks to everyone who supports the channel, whether with channel memberships or by using the links in the description. If you liked this episode, give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe so you don't miss new ones. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this one. And now that we're at the end, let's go cut or engrave something cool. But a quick trip to the kitchen sink with some... With some dish soup. Come on, Brian, you can do it.